Have you ever noticed a piece of furniture at a thrift shop and thought that would make a good book cover, the upholstery or the leather? Well, let me tell you a quick story. My husband and I bought a leather couch and chair when we lived in Indiana, moved it to Florida, and when we moved to Georgia, it was too big. My husband was going to sell it, but didn't like the offer that he received on it, so he just skinned the leather off of it. So now I have all of this beautiful leather, and I don't know what to do with it, and I decided it would make a great book cover. So I started by cutting a piece of that leather into a rectangular shape. One end of that I left irregular because I thought that would make a nice fold over. So I have it in that rectangular shape with the one irregular side. The the signatures were created out of 8.5 by 11 inch coffee stained paper. And they fit nicely within this rectangle. I cut the rectangle of leather to accommodate the fold over of the 8.5 by 11. The smaller one I just pulled in was the prototype that I made for this. The 8.5 by 11 folded in half fits nicely, but I need to determine what size or what type of binding I'm going to use. I'm creating a template out of cardstock, just folding it in half, cutting it down to an appropriate size to work with, which is about, I'm going to cut it two inches, uh, fold it over two inches, which makes a four inch width. And if folded in half, that will allow me to determine how I'm going to bind. So I'm marking where I want to punch my holes. And I've decided to use a long binding. So I will cut one quarter, or I will punch the hole one quarter inch from the end, then a half inch. I'll go in again another two inches. And I'm going to do that from each end. And I have the dimensions up above, kind of how it, how it laid out. But you can put those marks wherever you want and bind this however you choose. But this, this long binding is what I've chosen to utilize. So I'm preparing my template. And once I have that template complete, I will lay it in the center of my signatures and just get my holes punched. I'm going to punch a couple and mark the top to make sure that we ha- always have them going the exact same way so those holes line up appropriately when we get ready to pull the thread and bind these into that piece of leather. All right, all of those are punched, and we now have them ready to be bound in. I'm just laying them on that rectangular shape to see where I want to start that spine. So I want it to come in maybe a quarter of an inch from the end, so I'm laying them there and just marking that uh, first demarcation line for where I want that spine to lie. I have... I'm counting the number of signatures I have and making a mark for each center or for each signature. And I'm placing them about a little under a quarter inch apart, maybe, you know, closer to an eighth an inch apart. And now I'll lay my template down on its side, making sure that I have it centered appropriately and I'm just marking on each end line and then I will cross over with a line to connect those two and where they intersect is where I'll punch my holes. So we'll go ahead and punch the holes through the leather with the craft pick. Now as I start to punch these holes from the inside to the outside I realized that I'm leaving that little fuzzy piece of leather that punches through on the outside. So once I get them all punched, I'm going to go back and kind of take that craft pick and go through the outside cover into the inside to move that little fuzziness to the inside of the book instead of the outside of the book. I hope that makes sense, or I hope I'm making sense. So now we're ready to sew in the signatures. 
<clears throat> when I get my thread ready, I'm using a wax linen, and I'm pulling it um, enough thread off so I have the length of each signature. So if I have 10 signatures, I'm pulling it 10 times the length of one signature, six signatures, six times the length of one signature, and then just a little more for um, some extra room. So now we're going to go in, from the inside of the first signature to the outside cover of the book. And we'll go back in through that exact same hole. This is the first, first hole that we're going through. And when we go back <clears throat> through, we want to leave a little loop at the top. And I am leaving a tail on the inside. So now that we're through that first hole, we'll come back from the inside cover once again to the outside of the book in that second hole. And then thread our way to the other end. So we're going from the inside out, tightening that up. And then we'll flip this over and go from the outside in. And now back down from the inside to the outside. And I'll pull that thread through, kind of check it to make sure we're getting it tight and we're not losing that loop at the other end. And then we'll take this through the outside to the inside. And now we are on the last hole for the signature. And we're going to go from the inside to the outside. And we will skip over to the second row and come from the outside of that second row, first hole to the inside and attach signature number two. And we will just stitch our way exactly as we did on signature one back to the other end of the book. And the tricky thing here is working around this piece of leather because we have that fold over. We have quite a um, big piece of leather that is kind of flapping back and forth. But it is worthy, it is worthy effort, I think, in the end result. So stick with me. And we'll get through this second signature so you can see how we incorporate that loop, and then, then we'll uh, stitch the rest of them in, and, and I'll show you how we end it with the final signature. So we're coming through here, and now we will loop through, loop the thread through that little loop that we left. Now, before I pull it tight, I want to go back and make sure that all of my thread is taut or as taut as it should be. And that's why I leave that string, because it just gives me a little more uh, flexibility to tighten up my threads before I secure everything. So now everything is, is the way I went. We've looped that through. We'll tighten that up, flip the book over, 
And now that end string from that very first signature will tie off in a knot. And now we are ready to sew the rest of the signatures in. So we will just go through to that third demarcation line. So in signature number three, and we will continue uh, with each signature until we get to the end signature, and then I'll come back and show you exactly how we finish the last signature and secure everything into, into this book. So now we are at that final signature and we are ready to go through that last hole or next to last hole actually. We're getting down through that next to last hole. We're coming up, going from the outside in and now we are going from the inside out and we're going to go over to the previous signature and loop and come back through the same hole and tie it off in a knot and you see the washi tape here I put that little piece of washi tape on there to secure those last two holes because I had pulled too tight on my thread and had um, rip that paper there so that's why you see the washi tape so now we have all of the signatures in the spine I think looks great with that long binding and now to decide how we're going to keep it shut on the previous one I used a magnetic closure but I don't want to do that on this one so I'm going to cut a strip of leather I'm just using my metal ruler, placing it down and taking my craft knife and just cutting one. I'm not measuring. I'm just making it um, kind of irregular, not necessarily a uniform piece. This is not designed to be a perfect uniform booklet. It's kind of that rugged look I'm going for, and I'm going to tie that off in a square knot. But I've decided if I don't sew that on here and I'm just going to take a couple of stitches through that to secure it into place then I'll lose it when I use it so now we have two finished this was the prototype and I did that piece of leather with a little magnet so it has a magnetic closure that just kind of attaches like that this one I've sewn the tie on tied it into a square knot I'm going to open that up and show you how nice and flat these pages lie. Now, for this booklet, you can use copy paper like I did because I'm going to use it for a writing journal. But if you want to use it for an art journal, you know, put your watercolor paper in there or your sketchbook paper in there. And this would make a great way to house that as well. So I'm just going to tie that off in a square nut and share with you the pictures of the finished pieces. So here are the two. You have the smaller booklet that had that magnetic closure, the larger booklet that, that uh, has a square knot closure. I think they both open very nicely to either illustrate or write in. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for being here. Hit that like button. That does help me quite a bit by letting YouTube know that people are watching my videos and hopefully enjoying them. I hope you enjoyed. So thank you once again and I shall say bye for now. I did put a couple of uh, videos I thought you might enjoy if you watched this one. So once again, bye for now.